Hey, good morning. Welcome back to another episode. For those of you just tuning in now, my brother and I, Jack, close to a month ago, set out to travel from home, our own backyard, to get to the bottom of Papua New Guinea, the most northern tip of Australia, through the Torres Strait Islands. And we're here. We're camped there behind us in a little dilapidated but soon to be refurbished campsite on the edge of the beach, surrounded by granite boulders, mangroves, and with a view just on the other side of Jack there where he swam out to get the boat, Papua New Guinea, about four miles away, mainland New Guinea, final frontier. Today we're meeting up um, our butler's here, Terenzo, Laurie, a ranger here, uh, and, a, and a mate we went to school with, Harren, so we're heading out to catch some traditional food and see where the day takes us. Looks like it's gonna be a cracker of a day. We came through a pretty solid storm yesterday, uh, which apparently just happened absolutely randomly here. Our storms, tropical lows, form out of nowhere. So hopefully we're blessed with good weather today and we can head out to a few of the other islands, surrounding reefs, caves, and whatnot and get a bit more of a lay of the land. We're gonna take you guys along for the ride. As always, you can't make a plan. You gotta set uh, virtually zero expectations and take it all as it comes, soak it all up. We're so grateful to be here, to be able to do this. We're gonna make the absolute most of it. Let's do it. This is when you realize you have no keys for the boat after you've swum out to it to bring it back in. <laughs> wow. What's the game plan today, you reckon, Laurie? What do you reckon today? Yeah, well, um, go for a look. Yeah, we go down, suss out, borrow there, wow. see what it's like. Yep. You know, check out um, the reefs around there. Go for a fish or a dive? Yeah, go or? for a fish and dive. Um, get um, Bala Jack in the water. He's, do, he's doing all the diving, so. See what he got, eh? See what he's got. <laughs> um, I'll be up top keeping the water for him. <laughs> so, is for me? Yep, oh. I'll be a spotter for him, Woo. a bit of mouth taste. <laughs> After a good drink up last night. <laughs> Here we come for a cook up tonight, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another cook up. Right. Right. You ready for hit it? Yep, all oh, good, Bala. All clear here? Alright, clear. Jumpers on top. Some good trolling for Mackies on that side of the island there. Near the sandbars. You call this one the supermarket? Supermarket. That's and it. for a good reason. For sure. Water, we'll check out this aisle first and see if there are many things on sale. <laughs> <laughs> check out a few of the aisles. That's it. Martin's see if there's any Christmas What's specials. Special Christmas Martin specials. Today. Santa Claus is in town. <laughs> We're gonna drop his presents, we're picking them up. <laughs> Shit! That is a big trout, man. That's a stonker. That is a huge trout. Oh. All right, look at that. He's literally been in the water for one minute. What was he doing? I'll give these northwestern bullers one thing. They know how to catch a feed. Fish, preys, and I dare say they'd be pretty weapon at catching turtle and dugong when the, uh, when the time came as well. That there was a school of massive finger mark. Finger mark were really sought after fish, and there were schools all over this first rock that the guys jumped off on. Really shallow water, about five meters deep, and for finger mark, really clean water. These are super sought after and really hard to find at home. There was just so much life on this rock. Coral was awesome. There were Oriental sweet lip, GT were cruising in and out, coral trout. Uh, there were tusk fish, there were stripies, there was mangrove jacks. There was just so, so much diversity. And as you can see, spearfishing literally is one of the most sustainable forms of underwater hunting. 
It's just so selective. After a handful of dives, just admiring the different schools of fish, Jack finally found and picked out a big finger mark to take a shot at. <laughs> and just waited, did a couple of drops to pick the right one. Perfect size, not too big, not too small, super fatty. This is the first rock at the supermarket. I'm pretty happy with that. There's literally like, how many in the school you reckon? Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't be bothered counting or having a guess. Oh. How long was it in the water? Only like 30 seconds. Literally, it wasn't more than yeah. a minute. Yeah. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> First drop. Such a big trout. When Dan is just staring at me, I was like, oh, as soon as it turned, I was like, bang. <laughs> well done, man. Thanks, Thanks done, boys. Well done, boys. Pleasure. Along this fringing reef edge, it just must have been the optimal conditions for tropical rock lobsters. These crays were everywhere in pure abundance. And Laurie, who'd been hand grabbing crays what seemed like his whole life, just had no issue grabbing two or three on one breath hold. So far on this trip, Jack and I really had been living day to day and we were restricted in the way that we couldn't keep fish for more than a day. So it'd be one fish a day or one cray or two. But today we had Haran, Laurie, Terenzo and ourselves and all of their families back on the island as well. So we had a free pass to be able to load up on a bit of seafood. We're gonna be some happy people on the island. There was flathead everywhere. Just got away from the boys. And they've got something. Hey, what's that? No, it's cool. They're just doing like a long drift. There's really strong currents. And they drift. Oh, two crays. Woo! Three crays. By hand. By hand. Look at that. We're just drifting along the edge of this reef, which is on the edge of the mangroves. Oh, now you want to get in, eh? Now they've done all the work. Come here, come here, boys. Let me have a look. Ooh. Well done. Ooh. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, get him, Harry. Get him, get him. Hold him. How is it, Jack? <laughs> Pretty nice. Windy, windy, bubbly, brief. There we go, there's our... Ah, uh, yeah, I got the drone up. There's a few nice rocks on the edge there. That's the seafood basket so far. Finger mark, tuskies, trout, and a few crays that the guys have grabbed. Last 
And what are, we, what are we cooking up for lunch here, Bob? Uh, we've got a bit of a um, namaste here with the crayfish. So, um, get this up, especially for the us boys here, just finished diving. The mouths are a bit salty, so it's um, good to liven it up with a bit of namas. You know, you were saying everybody's got their own twist to the namas. Well, yeah. Uh, this is mine, so. Ginger, hey? Or? Yeah, ginger. Is it a bit of um, bit of zing? A bit of zing, yeah. What is he, little GT? Oh, he's a little one. He's not the one we saw. Might need some reinforcements with the spear. Headshot, headshot. Bucky Popper, eh? The Popper, mate. Straight on the Popper. How oh, was that? We just come into these mangroves. Oh, geez, sorry, boys. <laughs> we just come in here for lunch and for a mangrove swim. There's just fish everywhere, turtles everywhere, sharks everywhere. We just threw the popper out. We got a little Bubba GT. Let's go. You should want him leg or there instead of hold him. Crayfish numbers. Mm. The ginger's a really good touch in that, hey? Yeah, livens it up. Yeah, I love that ginger and chili through it. Wow, that's really nice. Come, 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 Oh, there's another one, Gigi there. Flick it. Pop off, pop off, pop off. Oh! Never do that. So sometimes if the spear breaks, you spear yourself. On an angle. Well, jump it, jump it. Jump away from it. It's good. Oh, Jack, the shark's coming here. That's a bull shark. Yeah. Fucking bull shark. Take a speaker. Take a speaker. Go, go. I'm in. Take a speaker. Gee, Jack, that was absolutely atrocious, but great to watch. <laughs> right. Are you just killing it? Nothing Turns out it's not easy to get him. Not easy yeah, to you see, the, like if if it breaks and there's a sharp end, you'll you'll it'll stick. snap and you'll go into it. Yeah, yeah. This oh, bullshit coming at you. Nah. <laughs> you just come out of the mouth of this tiny, tiny creek that we're about to swim oh, in. Oh, another one here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Behind you, behind you. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I'm I'm left left <laughs> <laughs> Have a go. At this is literally a like pristine coral reef and bommies like 200 meters out of this little lagoon just on the edge of these mangroves and then you come in here and it's just a thick rich with wildlife mangrove system really really rare GT there. to see the two yeah gt here decent sized shark there school of big golden trevally came out it's just fish everywhere and then you got new guinea gal on the hand spear i'm ready i'm so ready oh good gt there yeah, that's a good one. Just go on the other side of him near the mangroves and bring it towards him. Is that, oh, is that a tusky? Is that a tusky? Could be a big slady. Yeah. Jeez, it's all happening. Can get in there? Have a look. It is all happening. Yeah, definitely. Little shark here. Someone just stand on the front of the boat ready for spear at all time. So you reckon no crocs in here, eh? No, just sharks. Only one. Yeah. Only one but vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're gonna put that one in too. Straight up. Straight up. <coughs> Fresh as you can get. Good luck, eh? All the best. You don't have to do this, man. Because this is a race to do with that. Don't make it all. Yeah. Look, yeah, sorry, as we just wanted your boat. We sent oh, this. Yeah. <laughs>
Check this one out. <laughs> Straight out of the mangrove. We've been told there's no crocs, and I was swimming through. <laughs> And this guy just came straight out of the shallows. I can stand up in the water here, it's crystal clear. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Into the mix bag. Into the mix bag. Jack and I are a bit concerned. Because if there's anywhere there's going to be a big crop, it's up here in these mangroves. There's log crabs, and barrows, there's turtles, there's dugong. There's everything a crop would want to live here. And then we sort of swam up. Jack got an awesome mangrove jack. Always got a lot of fish. And swimming through. We come right up to the guts of this creek. This big, big hole. I was like, there was anywhere going to be a big crop. It needed to be right here. That was a little shark. Look, I completely understand that the audio here is absolute rubbish, but. I appreciate you understanding we are up a tiny creek in the mangroves in the middle of the Torres Straits trying to trying to film and basically we were just laughing about how ridiculous it was we were just swimming around in the hope that there would be no crocodiles where in everything that we'd learnt this would be prime country for crocodiles but fortunately as the boys suggested we were right so either we got lucky or the crocodiles there were vegetarian. Anyway, I was just fortunate to get a good feed of fish and be cruising around and diving in one of the most gorgeous places I'd ever been to. On to the next adventure. Home sweet home. Beautiful big high tide. Back in on high tide. Hear them cicadas? That's cool, yeah. Eh? yeah. The island's alive. Coming back in home now. Loaded up with a bit of seafood for the holiday season for all the families. Jack and I'll hopefully get to swing a cray and a couple of fish. And we'll do up dinner tonight. So he took the mate up there, bro. Wow. Thanks so much for that, boys. That was that was amazing taking us to the island there. That was the best. That was the best. Oh, yeah. That's what you were talking about. Come back from Kudu. Oh, yeah, that's not my next Yams got no fuel at the moment. Yams? Ah. No, no. Tuesday, 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 no. Of fuel that we can buy because for the next five or six days all the fuel stations uh, are pretty much pretty much closed well they are closed I asked the councillor here on the island uh, Terenzo and he said shop uh, shut up shop for almost a week uh, reason being it's holiday season so yeah no one wants to be selling petrol everyone wants to be eating good tucker and laying low and having cold beers and all the rest of the things that you do during the festive season, so Harren's going to try and sort out a 44 gallon drum of fuel, otherwise we're pretty much landlocked here. And supposedly there's some pretty serious weather coming uh, in a few days, so we want to be able to press a bit closer to civilization, I guess. Um, but this morning was this morning was so good. This morning was like one of the best, uh, the best mornings thus far. Awesome conditions and a lot of fish. Yeah, really encouraging to see how rich the wildlife is yet again anyway we're back at camp now and what we started this morning we're going to finish we're going to do a bit of a a bit of a bonfire here and clean that up and yeah just open the camp up a bit more hopefully that clears off the mozzies a little bit because the mosquitoes are pretty savage we're going to rid of lighter up lighter up and we just keep adding to it there's so much to add wow. all right yeah. bro it's, sounds good you blow this way with the wind yeah. Takes you back to your burning days on the farm, eh? Yeah, mate. Just out there, burning. Um, so we just got word from Harren that there's no way of getting um, fuel on this island till Wednesday next week, which is, yeah, we budgeted being here sort of two or three days. We've got 40 or 50 litres left for the boat. So, 
yeah, a bit of a logistical challenge fuel wise. So I think we're gonna have to do a ring around or a walk around to different families. I think Harren's gonna be onto that to see if we can like buy with cash a fuel drum here and there, like a 20 litre drum here and there. Uh, quite a lot of families will just have like a few backup ones. So we'll see if anyone's willing to spare. Um, so that's the fuel scenario. But other than that, camp's starting to look bloody good. Um, we've got all the scrap type stuff, palm fronds, uh, leaves from the, the Indian almond uh, and mango leaves burning up there. And anything solid we're keeping here that will break down and make good coals for Cook and Tucker on. Smoking the mozzies out at least. We just had a pretty solid effort cleaning up a large part of the campsite. Now we grabbed a mangrove jack. We've kept it in the sand to keep it cool, keep the flies off it. Beautiful fish jack got from the mangroves. Jack got the jack. And we've, um, we've found this as well. This has been like a, a welded up table with a bit of a mesh. So, that's the new cooking station, actually. Put it that way. Let him smoke. Really, a, a lot of these beach camps that the locals have done up to come and stay when the weather's good or for weekends or for just general family do's. They plant mango trees, cassava, chilies, coconuts, and yeah, whatever else they've got stock-wise to be able to do together with meals. And here, cassava is just growing wild. Cassava is a root-based vegetable that um, is relatively easy to grow because it requires no maintenance. Um, similar to that of what, a potato? Yeah. Potato, yeah. sweet potato, yeah. taro, yam. It's a good time. And here it is. This is it. Big oh, fan like, shape leaf. Yeah, it looks like gunja, but not. Um, it grows from cutting, so if you snap that off, and plant it, that'll just keep growing. But the trick is you plant it sideways and then from each of these nodes, fruit will come out and then it'll grow out the top. But we were digging here and this is sort of what you'll find growing off the base of the roots. Awesome, man. So we'll keep digging and we'll find a couple and we'll, we'll boil a pot of them. Yeah. Have a look in here. <coughs> Just to the fields. It's proper going wild there. <laughs> I want to find where the base of it is. Yeah. And it looks like there's another something going on in here. Beautiful. Couple more of them, we've got to feed. There it is, there's the jack. Slow cooking. And you see, you got a few sweet potatoes in there. And then we round it up to the bottom of the tucker box. A bit of like a jar of satay, like peanut satay. So we'll have that with rice. Now that's a pretty good feed. That is a pretty good food. Careful, bro. Another one here, old jet. Oui. There's a couple more good bunches there, eh? Look these two. Yep, clear. That yeah, that's plenty, man. Awesome. Are you good? Yeah, mate.
Oik. Over. Jack just swam out and picked the boat up, which is the least fun job to do. You reckon if they, you reckon if I get taken, tell them I was swimming in New Guinea. Because the true god of Jack kept swimming, he'd end up in New Guinea. Look at that, that, that headland, the clouds behind Jack. That's Papua New Guinea. All right, all right, all right, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. There's the camp in all her glory. Sun's setting to the west. Thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping us safe today. And for another, another good one, another golden one. Here he is, New Guinea gal. You need me. Almost made it, eh? Hey? You yeah, almost made it yeah, over I feel there. I'm like swim tonight. If I'm not in the camp in the morning, I'll be in New Guinea. Sunset. Cruise! <laughs> ah, That's sunset. Voila, if Spectacular. You, if, you, if you had a bit of fuel, we could have gone over to Wiley and then you should look the sunset from the other side point. Yeah, I know. Maybe tomorrow if we can find some. One. Oh, I'll put them other drums in and I'll go. Other couple of drums, they were fucking hard. That's him. Woo! 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 So it's 8.30 p.m. We're just getting back to camp. How much ankle line are you putting out? Oh. Just make sure you're not putting too much out that if it starts blowing straight this way, we'll end up on the rocks. Um, yeah, we're just anchoring the boat up now. Jeez, it's black tonight, eh? Dark. There's the camp. Yeah. So we're just anchoring it out. It's about 100 meters from the beach where we camped up. And it's pretty mangrovey. It's a couple of meters deep, a lot of tiger sharks, and there's a couple of crocs that live on the island as well. We can't see any red eyes with the, the spotlights, but we're gonna make a mad dash together. Side by side. <laughs> and swim back in at night after anchoring the boat out here safely away from the rocks. It's all part of it, eh? It's all part of it. How'd you enjoy that, Jack? Yeah, we've got to avoid doing that as much as possible. Yep, agreed. Um, note to self, closing statement for the, uh, for the day, for the episode. Do your absolute best never to have to anchor the boat out in the dark and swim back in when it's really dark and there's no one to be a lot of crocs and a lot of sharks. It's just, it was unavoidable this afternoon. It wasn't great, it wasn't great fun. Uh, but we're here and we're doing it. Thank you. That's two feeds. Sweet spud, bit of rice. And coconuts. <sighs> I'm buggered. Good night.